Hi, I'm Stephanie Weaver and welcome to my studio where I come to you every week and we get to paint something fun and beautiful and learn something new. So if you're new here, go ahead and click the subscribe button so that you can be notified every time I come live on YouTube. So this week, what we're going to be painting is a beautiful butterfly on a flower. So here's what we're going to be painting, this beautiful butterfly on a flower. So I love the oranges in this, uh, it's just so vibrant and pretty. So we are going to paint this. So while you guys are getting your paints set up, I'm going to cue the intro. Welcome back to another week of painting and what we're going to be doing, like I said, is we're going to be painting some beautiful butterfly on a really nice orange flower. So um, I've got my drawing already set up. If you have not received a drawing or know what you're going to paint this week, go ahead and click on the link that's in the uh, description and you'll get an email notification with the drawing. Now all the reference materials and supporting documentation is located on paintonthepalette.com. There's another link in the description where you can go to that and where I'll actually finish painting this uh, flower and butterfly there. What we're going to do here is actually get started on and get a nice first layer of paint and then move to paint on the palette to wrap this pretty thing up. Let's talk about our palette real quick. So what I have down here on my palette, I have my standard set up. I am missing black right here. I'll have to grab some black. So um, normally I have black. It's lamp black, ivory black, whichever black you prefer. So black and then ultramarine blue, cobalt blue, sap green, alizarin crimson, burnt umber, burnt sienna, cadmium yellow, orange medium. Sorry, wait, that's cadmium orange medium yellow ochre, and then cadmium medium yellow, okay? And then pile all by itself, I have titanium white. And then also, because I think I'm gonna be using it in this uh, painting, I have naphthol red. And it's not necessarily required. You can probably bring in whatever red that you have. I'm gonna use naphthol red because it's a pretty warm red. And I'll be using my lizard crimson as my cool red in this painting. So while I don't anticipate using all these colors, I always put them out because there might be times when I see that color or I wanna bring that color note in just to enhance the painting. And because all of us see colors differently, I would encourage you also to put out all these colors so that as you're painting along and you kinda of get that feeling, you get that movement to grab the color note that you want in your painting, okay? All right, so. What I'm going to do is I'm going to mix up a base orange color that I see so I can just kind of have it at the ready. In my container here, I've got my Gamsol. My Gamsol is my paint thinner. And I'm also probably going to be using this Galkid. So Galkid is a medium that's a fast drying medium and it helps the paint stick on top of the previous layer. So I'll be using Galkid to help the paint move around. Um, so I need a little container for that. And I have this little, little layered, <laughs> you can see like all the layers, all that's dry. Um, and that's probably been in use for about a year <laughs> of painting so that I can uh, just reuse it until I can't use it anymore. And a little goes a long way. So I'm gonna just pour a little bit in there. Okay. So if you were with me for the last five weeks, we've been painting on sheep. And that sheep painting, um, the videos are in video production. And I've got a major surprise for you in that video. I took it in a completely different direction as the final little segment. And that is 
it, it's just fascinating. I love oils because you can do that. You can switch things around. So I decided this, this next couple, we're going to do something a little less intense, more um, instant gratification, so to speak, where we'll be able to finish a painting in a session, if you so choose. But like you experienced with the sheet painting, if you choose to move forward and add on more depth, you're more than welcome. Oils, you can never give up. You can never surrender. It's just when you're ready to move on to the next thing is when you get to make that decision. So I have intention today to finish this painting. Okay, so like I said, I'm going to go ahead and mix my paints. So I'm going to grab some this cadmium orange. And I'm just going to make a nice little pile there. It's nice and already very malleable. I can move it around pretty easy. But I can tell that as I move into my painting, I'm going to want it to move easier. So I'll definitely grab on some, some of my mediums over here. So I'm going to make a separate pile. And I'm going to make this one a tiny bit lighter. I'm going to grab some cadmium yellow. So I definitely grabbed more yellow than I did orange on this one. And what's interesting about this painting is there's some greens in there, very subtle notes of green, and we'll bring those notes in as we paint. More yellow. Okay. And there's a darker color that I'm going to grab some of this orange, kind of pull it off side, and get some of my lizard and crimson into it. Notice I went dark, medium, light. That's kind of just something that I do in my, my palette. I try to do is keep the dark, medium, light, so that way I can just easily kind of go in and grab and see the various color notes pretty easily. Not to say that I'm always that strict. In the butterfly, I also see some burnt sienna, so I might just pull in another little pile it's right here and add in a little bit of burnt sienna. And that's a nice dark, darkish medium, I'd say, for the butterfly. Okay, so right now we've primarily played in the cadmium yellow cadmium medium orange and then a lizard and crimson and burnt sienna okay all right one other thing that i'm going to talk about before we get into the painting so in the past paintings um the landscape one we went with landscape style right landscape is when it's laying flat the longest edge is on the bottom and we choose that when we want to express a calm scene. And so this also is a calm scene unless you want to switch it over to the side, then it becomes a little bit more dramatic and you gotta change the composition a little bit to express drama. Um, so portrait style is when it's the short sides on the bottom and the long sides on the edge. You typically wanna uh, use portrait style when you're expressing drama or when you have a central subject, like a person or a pet, or you know, a portrait pretty much, or like maybe you've got drama of a waterfall. That would be another good instance of when to use land, uh, portrait style. So in this one, I chose landscape because it's um, calm and uh, I'm not making it about a single subject, but more about a whole scene. Okay, so. The other thing I want to point out here is this uh, material that I'm using. So this is Arches Oil pa Painting Paper. So Arches, Arches Oil Painting Paper looks like this. Um, you can get it in, it's a 140 pound paper. 
Um, this one I have in a 12 by 16. So what that allows me to do is I can cut it down to size. So I count this one down to an 8 by 10. And that way I get two 8 by 10s from one sheet. Uh, Arches oil painting paper. Wow, that's really great. It's a nice um, alternative to using canvas because it's less expensive and you can cut it to size that you want. But where there's some positives, there's also a negative. And that negative is, is it really sucks in the paint. So what that means is um, I'm going to have to use more medium and well more and what I'm used to uh, more medium and gamsol to get the paint to move okay so and I like I said I already have this pre-drawn and I do have it sprayed with workable fixative so that my lines don't move around okay all right let's get painting so what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and focus on applying the darks in all the areas that I see so I'm going to grab some of the dark mixture of the cadmium orange and burnt sienna, and I might add a little touch more. Okay. And this actually has more texture to it than what I normally use, which is the ampersand gesso, bro gesso boards. So as you can see, yep, it takes more paint. And in this little petal, I see some more green. So I'm going to pull in some green. Let's see, what do I have going on here? Where's that petal? I'm going to have to make some more paint. Well, easily that petal just kind of came in there. <laughs> so with the darks, what I'm thinking is, you know, the dark, that starts out dark at the bottom. So I'm going to start at the bottom and pull my paintbrush up. What that does is it just naturally loses some of the paint, some of the dark that's on there. Same with the light. So I want to start where it's lightest and bring it down into the dark. And that just helps it blend in and create those nice subtle variations and from light to dark. what just happened here that I'm going to go ahead and adjust. I'm using a dry brush, so I'm going to move this paint and go ahead and create the dark that I want in there by moving the dark into the light. I can do it the other way too. I can move my 
light into the dark. Now when I grab some of my medium, I am just really just touching the tip of the paintbrush into the medium and just grabbing just a teeny tiny bit. Kind of smoothing out some of that the texture that I have on here because I'm not ready to move towards the texture. I want to maintain the basic principles of fat over thin. So I want to keep the initial layers very thin and then we're going to add that thickness on at the end. Even if I go over this front petal, it's totally fine because we're going to call out that front petal a little bit later with some really defined highlights. Right now we're really just working in the medium and dark tones only. One of the things I just did there that kind of takes a little bit of time to kind of get a handle on your brush use. Um, I did have a darker color on one side of my brush and then a lighter color on the other side of brush. So I just flip it kind of back and forth. Um, it's not something that you need to learn how to do, but like 20 years experience just kind of makes you do it, I guess, to get more effective in the use of your time and your strokes. Because once you kind of get into it, then you got to break and come over here and get your paint break, you know, and back and forth. If you can, you know, conceptualize the ability to, um, I guess, think two steps ahead and prepare for that second step. And that just takes time, it takes practice. And so like this artist oil painting paper is a great thing to practice on because if you don't like it, you can literally rip it up. <laughs> so it's, it's fabulous for that too. Um, it's fabulous for like those daily painting things. And just get in there and practice. I like to think of the oil painting, it's just a continuous experiment on what you are able to create. And every day you can do something a little bit new. I'm going to create this darker petal that's kind of happening over here. This one's definitely in a lot of shadow. So what I did was I grabbed some of the ultramarine blue you know, yellow plus blue equals green, right? So ultramarine blue is a nice cool blue. So I'm gonna grab a little bit of that, mixing it with my orange, dark orange red. And it just makes a nice deep petal right there. I'll come back in and add a little bit more of a uh, highlight to those in a second. Right now, let's really make that dark petal come alive. Ultramarine blue, start from the base, move up. I 
It's also got a little hint of that right here. Just going to touch the edge. I see that while I have this color on my brush, I see it right here in this other flower. So I'm going to add that right there. Clean off my brush as it moved to another color. Moving towards the light here. Okay, while I'm in my oranges, I'm going to go ahead and move on to this other flower. This one I'm going to add a little bit of a white to. The reason why I'm doing that is it's in the background, and I don't want to call as much attention to it as the one in the foreground. So I'm just going to add little touches of titanium white. To the mixtures. Pretty color. I'm going to switch back to the dark. And this one I do see more this color, which was the uh, Lizard and Crimson and the Cadmium Orange. I'm going to add a little bit of the Burnt Sienna to it. I do see some of that right here too, so I'm going to go down and add that. It's funny how you start when you start painting and then you start seeing all these other colors. It's going to lightly blend those into each other. So what I'm doing is I'm wiping it, just kind of gently blending into the darker tone. I'm wiping off my brush. I'm coming up with a color note that's in between these two colors. 
I'm mixing them in the middle. I'm just blending these colors in a little bit better. make a little bit more of that white uh, orange mixture I just pulled out a little bit of this medium orange mixture add a little bit of white there we go add a little bit of my medium Just a little bit of my dark there, so I'm just going to reestablish that. Need some medium to make it go. <laughs> So this is a little bit different than our uh, ampersand gesso boards that I generally paint on. Just requires a little bit more medium.
So I'm going to tone down this red just a little bit, and I'm toning it down by grabbing a little bit of green that's the opposite side of the color wheel, so that helps just calm it down. Calm the red down. And gently blend because again I'm going with the principle fat over thin Now I can't see a little bit of my uh, drawing under here, and that's fine because this is just the first layer. We're going to add another layer of paint, and then the layer where we get to use that galkin, that helps add layer upon layer. And plus, this stuff dries so fast because of the uh, not only the medium that we're using, but also the Arches oil paper. While I'm still in my oranges, I'm going to go over to my butterfly. And this one, I am going to grab a little bit smaller of a brush. I'm going to focus on the darks right here. It's darker, closer to him or his little body. I'm going to grab my reference photo right here. And one of the things I did do in my drawing is I did draw in the lines and stuff. I'm not going to pay that close attention to the lines right now because I know that I'm going to come back with a, another layer and add in those details. If I were to worry about those lines right now, it would be just that, be worry. <laughs> and I want to go in and create the overall feel of this really soft, um, feathery light wing and not worry about those details so i'm going to kind of go in with a little bit of a lighter attitude than making sure i get in every single little detail a little bit of medium I see a little bit of green in his body. So I'm adding some green to the red. That creates a kind of nice dark. And then the shadow. I'm going to grab a little bit of the ultramarine blue, add that to this color that I'm creating here, which was a mixture of the orange, red, 
and a little bit of burnt sienna. And that's the colors that I see for his face and underbelly. I'm going to move to a little bit bigger of a brush because again I'm not on the details. I just used a smaller brush so I can get in the darks around his body and face. Now I'm going to work on the wings. So you can kind of see this is about the size brush that I have and I'm working on an 8 by 10 panel so it's, you know, still not as big as my whole finger. But it's probably as big as my pinky nail. It's a number two Robert Simmons Titanium series. I like these. They're nice. They're synthetic. They hold their grip pretty good. Um, but anyway, we're going to get cracking on this thing. And now I do see a little bit of yellow ochre in here. So I'm going to mix a little bit of the yellow ochre into the oranges and yellows that I have. Need some more medium on that. And grab some of the paint thinner too, which is our gamsol. Because really it's just not moving as thinly as I would like or quickly evenly as I'd like. There it goes. Now what I'm seeing is in the center of his wings, like right here, right there. See how light that is? I want to make sure that I keep that light in there because it's almost like the, the, the sun is going to be shining through that. So we want to keep that the thinnest layer that we possibly can. So I'm avoiding that area right now. Okay, now what I'm going to do, I'm going to dry, uh, wipe off my brush really, really well. And I'm going to grab a little bit just of the Gamsol and wipe off my brush just a little bit. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab some of this paint that's in here and I'm going to pull, pull it over this so it creates a wash. There. Same thing for this other little segment right here. There we go. I got this little butterfly wing to work on. And I'm going to kind of keep the same thing in mind. The same thing in that I want to keep this area right here. Very, very light, very thin. So I'm going to focus on the areas around that, getting some pigment on those areas so that I could drag a clean brush into that wing. Okay, and I'm seeing a little bit of a more of his body, like right in there. 
So I'll just bring that in there. Okay. Nice clean brush. A little bit of Gamsol. I'm going to drag some of this color to create that iridescent wing. That see through wing. Okay. Now he's got a tail. I'm also going to work on Now you notice I haven't used any of the black or darker colors. The reason why I'm choosing is not to do that. And I know a majority of the times I'm saying, you know, start with your darks first and then to the lights. But these are details. These are those little bitty lines like that, um, that give, you know, the, the look to the butterfly's wing. These are details. What we're focused on right now is the overall larger color notes that we see. So, yeah. So I'm going to go in and add his tail, and the majority of it, not the details, but what's underlying the details, is that orange color. That makes sense. Okay, he's got a little bit of a yellow head. And you notice I also did not add the antenna. Those are the finest details. Those are probably going to be ones where I sit down and draw them. Okay. Okay. All right, last uh, for this first layer, I'm going to go ahead and add in the stems. Okay. To make the stems, I'm going to grab some of my sap green and I'm going to start with that and I'll add a little bit of an ultramarine blue to go underneath. That'll be our nice shadow area right there. Okay. And that's what we'll start with. Starting right underneath. I'm going to grab some of the green. I will come back in and refine these leaves. I like what I did there. I don't think I want to really add these leaves in, but I've already got them drawn in, so now I have to. Unless I want to paint everything white, which I don't. So I'm going to just kind of give little soft indications of the leaves.
right, so I think we're at a good stopping place for our first layer. And we're going to continue to paint on this because um, it's definitely not done. There's still some more work to be done. I've got my details to add to the butterfly for sure. I've got some highlights that I need to add, some depth that I need to add, and some additional color notes um, that I'd like to see in the flowers to really bring them out. I also really want some texture in there. Right now everything's so smooth, so soft and smooth, and I want some pop. I want some vibrancy in there, you know what I mean? So um, what we're going to do is I'm going to take a breath, let this set. We're going to go over onto paintonthepalette.com. That's paintonthepalette.com. We're going to finish up this painting over there and um, I'll include a link in the description here so that you can join me over there. And don't forget to like and subscribe this video. I come here every week so that you can start on a project that is fun, vibrant, and you learn something new every single time. And you experience something new about what your style is every single time. So um, we will see you over on paintonthepalette.com.